Today on the channel, it's return to the Kyle Peterson Top 5, and today we got something entirely different. First off, we got the Bushwhackers Top 5. Then, in honor of the Bushwhackers, for the first time in my life, I'm going to try sardine. And the spirit of Ultimate Warrior will run forever! here and welcome back to the channel for another edition of the Kyle Peterson Top 5, a Thursday tradition here on this very YouTube channel as every single Thursday I'm counting down my top 5 favorites and occasionally top 10 favorites of something and today that something is a tag team, a classic tag team, of course the Bushwhackers. I would throw the Sheep Herders in here, unfortunately Sheep Herders never got action figures. Hopefully one day, maybe Mattel Legends, we get some Sheep Herders. And hopefully we get more Bushwhackers. We just recently got them in the Survivor Series Elite line. We'd love to see big rubber guys of the Bushwhackers. As we know, they just missed uh, the LJNs of old. Hasbro's being their first figures. But we're, of course, going to do this countdown like we do all the other countdowns on the channel with a little bit of a twist. We'll get to it here, but we're going to start at number five, work our way to number one. Number one being my favorite Bushwhackers figures of all time. Of course, my list. Make sure you put your list in the comments down below. And, uh, of course, my list is right. Your list is right. We know how that goes if you've been watching these videos. But another fun top five. And the Bushwhackers, uh, I never took seriously as a little kid. Obviously, as a little kid, I didn't know about their sheep herders past. That must have been a crazy thing for a lot of fans, of course, maybe watching UWF, watching uh, some of the territories in Australia, New Zealand wrestling, uh, knowing the sheep herders and then seeing them turn into the bushwhackers had to really be quite the mind blow to a lot of them. But on the old playground back in the day, we talk about that. Nobody knew the sheep herders. They were just the bushwhackers to us. They were zany, just fun loving guys from New Zealand is what they were. And I would never say they were up there with Demolition, Powers of Pain, uh, the Legion of Doom for me as far as tag teams go. But they were one of those teams you respected. You respected, especially, you know, Butch and Luke at that battling ram with the heads in there. Oh, that was just a dynamite tag team moves back in the day. Uh, but the Bushwhackers had their place, a little bit of comedy. You would see them as a good enhancement team that were never lost. You think of Luke coming in to the Royal Rumble, going in, going right out. You never lost anything with the Bushwhackers. I never thought less of them for stuff like that. Just a really good tag team that were going to put up a fight, but not maybe always win, but they would have their wins a time or two. Remember their feud with the Rougeau brothers, and I always kind of think of the Bushwhackers and the Rougeau brothers to be kind of, here's the heels, here's the faces. Not the same gimmicks at all, not even close, but very similar. I never thought they'd win the tag titles, but always thought they had the name value, always thought they would have a fight there. So I always did enjoy my time watching the Bushwhackers, of course. I remember WrestleMania 39, I was out there in California, where unfortunately Butch did pass away. Very depressing, of course, for him to fly all the way to California to die. Uh, that's never good, to bring this video down a little bit. But the Bushwhackers, an all-timer, my dad's favorite tag team of all time. You think it would be the Powers of Pain, but no, he would tell us. We've talked about it. We've had him here on the channel talking about it. He always dreamed of the day he'd go to a live show and the Bushwhackers would just be licking his face. Yeah, somebody fact check that guys on the couch i would not fact check that uh but uh bushwhackers definitely a big time tag team back in the glory days of the wwf uh we all remember the bushwhackers and if you don't you're lying to yourself how about that but in honor of the bushwhackers today i said what can i do extra special in this very video that's never been done before well i'm taking that next uh step into something i don't know but I am diving into the chicken of the sea. And what is the chicken of the sea? I don't, I don't know what the chicken of the sea is. But of course, they make tuna. They make all that other kind of stuff. But they also apparently make sardines in a tin can. And of course, everybody was grossed out about the Bushwhackers. Oh, they're eating sardines. Well, none of us ever tried sardines. I don't know about you. From where I lived, we didn't have sardines. It just wasn't a thing. Nobody was eating sardines on a regular basis. But I've heard they smell. Well, good for me. I can barely ever smell. You guys know that. So I don't know what I'm getting myself into, but I'm going to do it in honor of the Bushwhackers. I'm going to try sardines for the first time ever. Looks like these expire August 22nd, 2028. So they're packed with good fresh ingredients, I have to imagine here. 3.75 ounces. Not sure what's all inside here. Uh, this is going to be absolutely disgusting, though. I have a feeling. But it is a product of Poland. Shout out to Poland out there. 
Chicken of the Sea International, El Segundo, California. How about that? And I did bring uh, some paper towels just in case I throw up. I don't think I will. I've probably had worse things in my mouth over the years. Uh, who knows? But we're going to try the Chicken of the Sea. Hopefully I don't spill on my table here. But it's got a little can opener thing at the top like I'm popping a beer can or something. And we're going to get down to this. We're going to try sardines for the first time ever. Got to just roll this back, I think. Hopefully none of this good sardine juice goes flying everywhere. That's all we need is sardine juice all over the place. Can I get it? Oh, here it comes. Oh, my gosh. What are we doing here? What am I doing here? I've gone too far. I can't step back. I guess I could edit the video and say I didn't do it. But very jelly water-like substance inside here. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to try it. There is definitely a smell. It's a, a fishy smell. It's a canned fishy smell, I think, is what it is. But we're going to try it. I was kind of hoping for some heads and eyeballs. Unfortunately, none of those included on this one. But I'm going to dry, grab a piece of sardine out, I guess. What am I doing? The things I do for this channel, I tell you what. And I'm going to put it on here to kind of get some of the soggy juices off of it. There's no way this is going to be good. This could, But it could be. It could be a game changer. We're going to see. It's like a little kid, like, working up the courage to try something. Very slimy. Uh, very fish-like. It, it's breaking apart, so you got to think there's, like, all kinds of, like, salt in here that's making it kind of dried up and falling apart. Very gelatinous. It feels like it's jello in my hands. I'm just going to go in. I'm going to try it. I'm going to give it the old one-two. We're going to see a little sardine. And a real one at home would grab their sardines out of the pantry and join me in this. But we're going to do it. We're going to try it. Getting up the courage. Let's do it. I should have brought a drink to trace it with, but no, nope, not going to do that either. Just going to go down the hatch with this sardine. Whew. Bottoms up. All right. It does got a little... Ooh, ooh that back end hits you. It's meaty. It's got a fishy taste, a, a very raw fishy kind of taste. You know that fishy taste. No bones or anything, thankfully. All in all, nowhere near as bad as I thought they were going to be. I thought they were going to be just absolutely god-awful. Be very, like, vinegary and taste very funny. It tastes fishy, so if you don't like fish, you're not going to like this. I don't like the wet, like, stuff. I don't like that flavor to it. But it's got a little bit of meat to it, which isn't bad. I like a little bit of meaty in my bite of fish and meat, obviously. So I got to say, you know what? Shout out to Luke and Butch. Maybe they were ahead of the curve. I don't know if I'm going to be eating these on a regular basis, but I've definitely eaten worse things in my life. Uh, I, I'm the guy that threw a handful of mealworms in my mouth to get a letter grade better in college. College professor dared us. If anybody eats these live mealworms, they'll eat a handful right here on the spot. I'll raise their grade one extra grade. I couldn't have got up there fast enough. I'll do that for an extra grade. But here we are, Chicken of the Sea Sardines. Uh, interesting. Hopefully, Luke and Butch do appreciate this right here. So there it is, Sardines, Chicken of the Sea, taste test. Now we got to get down to what everybody came here for, the Luke and Butch Bushwhackers Top 5. All right, sardine taste test over. Not as bad as I thought it would be. Hopefully, I don't have any sardine remnants on my face. Definitely eating worse stuff in the world. Not sure I would go back again, but now the fun begins. Can I convince my daughters? Can I convince my wife to try a sardine? That's going to be the fun thing at dinner tonight. I'm sure absolutely none of them will even try it as they won't even try salmon or shrimp or any kind of fish. So I don't think I'm going to have any luck with canned sardines, but you never know until you try. You never know until you try, and you never know what's going to be top five in this Bushwhacker countdown. Remember, put your list in the comments down below. But number five, we go to Mattel. We go to Mattel Battle Pack for a two-pack of the Bushwhackers in a little bit more rare outfit over the years. Uh, the green top with the camo, the tan camo down below. A deeper cut for the Bushwhackers, but one we respect, and I love that they made a difference from the Legends 2-pack that was the Target exclusive for the Battle Pack here with the basic style figures. I still remember the first time I ever saw this pack, I was on a trip to the Omaha Zoo. Oh, shout out to the Omaha Zoo. And I stopped at the Council Bluffs, uh, tar almost said Target, Council Bluffs Toys R Us, easy for me to say, 
on the way home. That's where I picked these up. That's where I saw these for the first time. I said, oh, that's a must-have. Got to have the Bushwhackers in the collection. But a fun version of Luke and Butch definitely feels different, and that's one of the things that I really like about this set here. Of course, basic style articulation. Basic's a little bit better back in the day with the ankle articulation, but still a basic figure. These hats, good luck getting them to stay on their head. That never works out for me. That's kind of a theme throughout the years with Bushwhacker Mattel figures. But still fun for what it is. Is it the best? No. But is it the fifth best? Yes. All right, we head to the number four selection in our Bushwhackers countdown. And number four, fairly recent. Our most recent Bushwhacker figures. Of course, Luke, it's Butch. It's Mattel Elite Line from the Survivor Series Elite line here. Now, these are hitting stores right now. They're available on ringside. Use discount code KYLE. Save yourself 10%. We know how that goes. First Bushwhacker figures from Mattel in a heck of a long time. Uh, a little bit of updated versions of past ones, I guess is what we have, and probably more on that later in this video. But it was great to get Luke and Butch back out there for the masses, and I love what Mattel did in a bit of a plot twist. They made this a two-in-one figure, as we did get the doink heads from their Survivor Series match, of course. Now, personally, in the package, they should have been displayed like this, not with the doink heads. I feel that takes away from the Bushwhackers a little bit, and I think the majority of people buying this for the Bushwhackers, not the doink heads however for me i'm buying it because i'm a completist of the elite line but outside of that i'm buying it for these doink heads because really excited to have something different a little dash of extra to bring somebody that maybe has different versions over the years say i don't need bushwhackers well you see this then you do need bushwhackers so i do appreciate them putting these doink heads in here just a little extra change of pace you want to use them you can you don't want to use them guess what you can or if you're like me I'm going to buy two sets of these to display both looks on them right there. So very, very fun. Hitting stores right now if you're on the look or, of course, ringside collectibles. It is the Bushwhackers Mattel Survivor Series Elites. We've hit the halfway point in our sardine taste test video, a.k.a. Bushwhackers Top 5. We're at the number three spot. Make sure you put your list in the comments down below and subscribe to this YouTube channel as we got videos every single day and every Thursday we got a countdown of some kind. But here we are once again at number three. Once again, we're seeing a pattern. We're seeing a theme. We go to the Mattel Elite line for the very first Bushwhacker figures. It's Luke. It's Butch, of course, from the Toys R Us 2-Pack Legends exclusive. A perennial peg warmer, and we've seen that with the Bushwhackers over the years in pretty much every line they've ever been a part of for the most part. Uh, but this one was very cool, very early on in the Mattel infancy of them taking over. Very infant in the Legends line in the old school Legend 2-pack exclusive. Would love to get back to those Legend 2-pack exclusives. Doesn't seem to be in the cards at this point, at least. Uh, but the Bushwhackers, what can you say that we haven't already said? Very cool for them to get into the new generation of figures with Mattel. You see this, you know this is the Bushwhackers all day long. Uniform between the two, of course, looking very similar. Different heads, different tattoos going on. They did get the hats. This is the first time we got this hat mold from Mattel, and we saw that again, of course, in the Basics line we just showed earlier. But a very fun one here, kicking off the tag team division to a good start, just like Jax did once upon a time. So there it is, the Bushwhackers Mattel Toys R Us exclusive Legends 2-pack coming in at number three. Here we are at the number two spot. Only two spots remain in our Bushwhackers countdown, and this one, very sentimental to me. Where do we go? We go back to Toys R Us, just like the last one. We go to the two-pack exclusive Jack's Classic Superstars, Luke and Butch. Luke and Butch, of course, the Bushwhackers once again, came with the craziest weapons of all time. Food, drinks, pizza, that kind of stuff, which I thought was a little bit strange. Now, once again, this was a Toys R Us exclusive. We saw a little bit of theme of that with the last one. Uh, but it was very cool to get these two in the line. I was very excited to get them in the line because uh, the Toys R Us, you go way back to the time, these were the cutting edge figures at the time. Everybody saw these were like, oh my gosh, it can't get better than this it can't get better than this that's where you hear in this day and age that's so jacks you got to take yourself out of the moment because people are saying that's so jacks about this because there's a great mattel figure or whatever well guess what 25 years from now that mattel figure is going to be oh that's so mattel so you got to put that in the back of your head here but this was a great game changer an iconic tag team we had not had since the hasbro days so the legends were never celebrated we talk about it in my classic superstars book my interview with Jeremy Pidauer, 
cheap plug for that available on Kindle now. If you're looking for that classic Superstars book, you can get it a little cheaper if you want it digitally, finally out there to the masses. But very, very cool at the time. Now, this was a huge peg warmer. We all remember this. This sat at Toys R Us's for years. There were some Toys R Us's that closed down with these packs still in them. I can't believe that, but it's true. Uh, the Bushwhackers never been one to set the world on fire. The last Legends one we talked about wasn't on fire. The Hasbro back in the day was not on fire. So it's always interesting. A lot of us want the Bushwhackers, but it seems to be the majority of people out there really don't want the Bushwhackers. So take that for what it is. But this one, very fun at the time. I was here for it. I was eating up everything the Classic Superstars line was sending back then with a fork and a spoon. As you guys know, I'd go to KFC and get a spork from time to time. But the Classic Superstars Tag Team Toys R Us exclusive Bushwhackers coming in at number two, which means there can only be one. What is it? Stay tuned. We've hit the number one spot in the countdown. Once again, you got your list together. Put it in the comments down below. Make sure you put them in order. That's the fun part. That is the hard part. And of course, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Videos every single day. Every Thursday, we got a countdown of some kind. And dangerously close as I'm filming this to another top 10. So got to decide what that is. If you got some ideas for a top 10, throw it in the comments down below. But here we are at number one. What is the number one Luke and Butch Bushwhackers figures of all time? I think most will know it going all the way back to the WWF Hasbro line. Two very iconic action figures. So iconic they actually did get re-released with a new paint job and a little bit of switcheroony action later on. But this one, this two-pack, extremely iconic. However, possibly the second biggest peg warmer in Hasbro history. I still think the Rockers was the number one peg warmer from the Hasbros. I think the Bushwhackers are very close number two. We got more tag teams down the line. Of course, the Legion of Doom. You got the Demolitions of the World. But these guys seem to stay around forever. They were also released later on with a different carding, with the SummerSlam carding on the top. So that put them out to the masses where they probably didn't need to go back out to the masses. So these guys were pretty big peg warmers. But in a child fig fed, these guys got a lot of use for me. They were really a journeyman tag team for me. They were always on the card. More times than not taking a loss, but they were always on the card. I can't say that about every other figure. I always enjoyed these guys. Going back to the Rougeos, really wish we had the Rougeos back in the day to square off with them. Now we have those, though, from Grapplers and Gimmicks line, as we know. But definitely cool figures way back when. Didn't go over a lot, didn't win a lot, but it was great to have the Bushwhackers. It felt like they belonged in the Hasbro line. I don't know anybody that said, oh, the Bushwhackers, what are we doing? Why are they here? It felt like they belonged. They might not have been everybody's favorite tag team. It's tough to be a favorite tag team when you got you know the Demolitions and Legion of Dooms of the world in the line. But man, this worked off really good. This was a great tag team where Typhoon and Earthquake, they finally came into my fig fed. The Natural Disasters, couldn't believe it. So excited to get their figures. What did I do? I got home and they went over and beat the Bushwhackers. That's what kind of happened. Whenever there was new blood in the Hasbro line, that's where they would be introduced. They'd be introduced beating a team like the Bushwhackers more often than not. So very sentimental favorites for me uh, going way back. As I said, my dad's favorite tag team, so I always enjoyed them at that aspect as well. Loved keeping my dad up to date on all the Bushwhacker activities. Dad, Mean Gene was just doing an interview with the Bushwhackers. You're going to want to sit down and take notes. It was a very revealing interview, and I give him all the gory details of that interview, and he loved it. I'm sure he loved it from little seven-year-old Kyle at the time. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? But the Bushwhackers, L almost said LJN, I wish... Major Bendies, let's get him out there. But the Bushwhackers Hasbros, the number one Bushwhackers of all time, as voted by me. Have to think a lot of people of my generation are going to have this at number one as well. But that's where I turn it over to you one last time. Put it in the comments. Put your list down there. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Don't forget about my other YouTube channel. Subscribe to that as well. Patreon for early access to all the videos here on the channel. And then, of course, social media, Sir Paul 64 on the X, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson on threads and on Instagram. So for the Bushwhackers and Sardines too, I'm Kyle. See you guys all real soon.